Cursor has just released some huge updates which are going to change my coding workflow forever. These include a background agent, a new code review bot, some better MCP integrations and much more. And in this video, I want to walk you through each one of them and show you exactly how you can use them. If you're new here, my name is Moritz. I've built two apps that have done over 20K per month. I have a product management background and I did all of this without knowing how to code. Okay, let's jump into the video. So the first thing we're going to look at is background agents because that really is the thing I'm most excited about. And I think that will be the most useful thing for me. So if you're here in cursor, you'll notice now that there's a new drop down option here, which is called background. And if you use cursor before, you probably know about the agent feature. So it's basically you type in your prompt here, and then the agent will go off and write the code for you. But you're seeing the code and you're approving the code. So you're very much in this like co-pilot with the AI agent in the, in this co-pilot mode, right? But background, the background agent is very different. So when you have background enabled, you can basically type in your prompt. So in this case, I said, I want you to help me create a pricing landing page. It should be in the same style as our current landing page, add a link to it in the footer. The order should be so and so. So I basically wrote a small specification and this for context is it's a small ticket on our backlog. It's something that I never saw the importance of and got around doing. And it's just been sitting in my backlog. And I would maybe normally in a team hand this off to a junior developer, but now I can just hand it off to a background agent. And so I typed in this prompt, sent it off. And what then happens is the background agent actually goes ahead and works on this feature. And it took about, I think like five minutes. This was a not very complicated task. And it came back when it was done with basically this screen here. You can see I created a new pricing page and updated this and this. And then it lets you like check out the changes that have been done. It creates a new branch, which is awesome. So it doesn't make any changes in your main branch. And then you can check out the pull request here. So basically creates a pull request for you. You can also check them out locally, but let's just have a look at the pull request that it created. That's the pull request it created. It has all of the changes here and I can review it. And if I think it's good and if I've tested it locally, I can basically just merge this pull request, which I've done already, merge it into a main branch and that basically pushes it live. Yeah, this feature is awesome. You can basically run a bunch of things in parallel now. So these are more for small tasks that you would usually hand off. You can just like write all of these tasks and hand them off in parallel and have the background agent work on them while you work on other things. And then it will just come back to you once it's done and you can then approve them or reject them or even make like small modifications to them. Okay, so that's the first feature. The second thing that's really useful is a new code review bot that they've introduced. And how that works is, first of all, you have to just integrate your GitHub and it'll help you set this up. So you basically just like log into your GitHub and then it's hooked up to a cursor. And this bot is called BugBot and it's very easy to use that. So just activate it for the GitHub repository that you want it in. So in this case, I activated it for the copy coder GitHub repository. And then I can just take some of these options here, only run when mentioned, only run once. So in this case, I just said, okay, let's only run it when mentioned. And here's how it works. So this is the pull request I showed you earlier. And what I can do here now is I just type in a comment and just say bug bot run. And then this bot will again, run in the background like an agent, review this pull request, review all of code that has been done inside of this, inside of this branch, and basically tell me if there are any bugs here. And in this case, it said BugBot reviewed your changes and found no bugs. Okay, cool. And if it did find bugs, it will just list them here. So a really useful feature and really easy to use, and definitely something that really enhances my coding workflow. And you can see where all of this is going. This is all going from like this co-pilot phase that we have right now into a more agentic state. So everything is going to be happening with agents. It's like having a team of developers working for you that you can assign tasks to and do things for you in the background. Okay, the other thing that is really cool that they added is this list of MCP tools and making the integration of MCPs much easier. If you don't know what MCP tools are, they're really hot right now. So that you can think of them like integrations, basically. 
just easier to set up and easier for agents to work with. Up until now, it's been a pain inside of Cursor to set these up. So you would need to go into your settings here and then you can go into MCP and you then need to like edit this JSON file and add them in there. And now Cursor is curating this list here that you can find on this website of all of the MCP tools that can be added. And I'm sure this list will keep growing. They only released this yesterday. And it makes it super easy to add these MCP tools. So for example, here, Notion, I can just click Add Notion, open it, and then I can basically hit Install and it will just add the MCP tool. And then I can go and use it. So here's one example of me using this Notion MCP that I just added. So I hooked it up to my Notion workspace, to the place where we have like our tickets board. And I can just create tickets from Cursor directly now. And I can even assign it to the person on the team. So in this case, me, add some details into the ticket. So I can do a bunch of stuff right from Cursor here now and just basically operate my Notion boards from Cursor. So that's pretty awesome. Okay, another cool thing that they added is a memories feature. Now you can basically just tell Cursor to remember something. So here, for example, I said, remember that when you install shared CN components, do not use the old outdated command, instead use the new command. So this is something that the models always have problems with for some reason, that they always, when they try to install shared CN components, they use this old command. And so now I can just add this to memory and it will add it to memory automatically. And you can see here, yeah, you can see here under the rules tab inside of memories, that's where this was then added and then in the future it will just always remember that. So pretty cool and this is like the memories feature that ChatGPT also has. Another nice little thing that they added is that the chat here is now much richer. So you can see here that if I want to get a visualization of things, I can say draw a mermaid di diagram and it will draw a mermaid diagram inside of my chat here which can help me just for example, understand my code base better or get a better overview of the different APIs I have and so on. This is cool and it also displays tables now. So in this case, I told it to list all of the APIs that we have just to get a better overview of like how this application is interacting with our AI APIs. Yeah, and finally, they made a few smaller updates. So maybe you've noticed the settings page here is now looking much cleaner, easier to find your settings here and make sure you have the right things here activated. You can see like the models tab here is cleaned up. They've also made some changes to the dashboard here. So you can see your usage stats much better. And they've also, it's not super relevant for me, but for people that are using Jupyter Notebooks, they've also made it much easier that to, to work inside of Jupyter Notebooks now and the agent can actually write code inside of Jupyter Notebooks. So yeah, I think these updates are really awesome and especially the background agent, I will be using that a lot and see how much more productive I can become. If you're a beginner to Cursor and don't know yet how to use it, I do have some courses inside of my school community to help beginners get started with Cursor. So I have this Cursor Bootcamp here, which is just a three-day step-by-step course, how you can get started with Cursor, super easy. And anyone without a coding background can use that to get started. And then I have a full video course here on Cursor as well. So you can come check that out. I'll put the link below. Cool. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you liked it and yeah, see you in the next one.